welcome to Should I Buy This Game featuring Colorfield. My name is Christine and in this video I'll give you a brief description on how the game is played and then share a few things I may like or dislike about the game to help you decide if you want to add Colorfield to your collection. Here we have Colorfield and it is a tile placement game. And it is a two to four player game but I'm going to share how I personally play it solo. Now the first thing you want to do is turn over your card for the community tools to see what little benefit you get. And this time, all coral tile edges are wild. So that means even if you don't match the coral with the coral, you'll still be able to score a point, which is nice. Now, regardless of how many players are playing, everybody is going to fill their board with the foundation tiles. And you're taking them just one at a time, placing them in spots one through six, and this little arrow is going to be facing up. It's in the bottom corner, facing up. And the goal of this game is you're trying to match colors. So you can see right now already in the foundation, internally there are some match colors, but here there aren't a lot of matched. You have the blue, you have this red, and you have this blue there. And so the goal is, as we're choosing tiles, we want to match all the edges. So in round one, you're going to have, there's round one, two, and three. So we're using round one. And round one consists of five stages, or like five turns. Now, regardless of how many players you're playing with, you will play place three tiles onto your palette. And then one person's going to take a tile and it's going to be replenished. And that is where my made up solo mode came in. I use the rules of Calico. So what I do is I choose one and then whichever one is furthest on this side, I'm going to retire it. So I'm looking here and I know that there's five rounds. So I'm trying to decide which one do I want to keep because I'm not going to be able to replace all six tiles. So in terms of matching on the outside. This one matches. This one only matches on one side, so I don't think I want to keep it. So I think this is the one I'm going to focus on to keep. So then I want to look at these tiles I have here. And that one's not working because it doesn't have blue on the edge. So I'm looking, I'm thinking this one's going, I'm going to use this one. So this one gets removed and put on my discard and I'm putting this one here. Now I have a match with the blue, a match with the coral, and this here matches. So in terms of uh, playing solo, this piece here, I would then discard, and I would put two new pieces out. So now I'm looking, is there something for this corner? Now this one's pretty good. We have the coral, we have the blue and the yellow. So I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to get rid of that piece and bring in two new pieces. So now let's see if there's something with the coral and I'll turn my pieces to see, are they matching? So this one here, I've got coral, I've got the blue and this blue. So I think I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to get rid of that one and bring in two new pieces. And this is how I play it solo all the time. I haven't actually played this game with anybody else. I've just always played by myself. So here, oh, I've already fixed, I've already done this one. It's these two I'm looking at changing. So with the yellow, ooh, this one looks good change that one there. I've matched the blue. I'm making a longer blue. I've matched that yellow. Nice. And so now I'm just looking for my final piece in this round. Something that will be down here. So let's see. That coral, but does it do that way? Not really, because you have the matching coral there. Yellow, blue, you have the yellow and the coral, 
the blue, it just wouldn't match there. So that's a possibility. Otherwise I have this one and I would match the yellow, the blue and the blue. So in this case, because we had this card that says coral edges are wild, I might use this piece here instead. Because I'll still get a point here, even though that doesn't match. And so you can see on my discard pile, I have five tiles. That means I've taken five turns and these will get put away. So now it comes to scoring and each, each edge you match, you get a point. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, because of the card, I get the point for this one, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So I put 23 on my board. Now the second scoring is for the longest area. And so I have this one that's one, two, three, and I have this one that's one, two, three. So I only score once and I'll get three more points. So for round one, I have 26 points. From here, whoever came first um, gets rid of all their tiles and starts fresh. If you came second, you're allowed to keep one tile. But in a two-player game, each person's allowed to keep one tile. So I would look to see which tile best matches. And I would use that. We have our little friend here, Albie. You can show Albie. He's come to play the game with me. Albie loves art. And if he thinks I'm doing art, he must be involved. And this game, he thinks I'm painting and needs to come here. So anyway, that is the basis of how the game is played. You're just, there's two goals to match the outside tiles and then to get these longer areas to score. Now, I just wanna mention that these are inspiration tokens that you can use and you can use them to either swap two tiles or rotate a tile after it's been placed. However, I've played this game multiple times and I have never used any of these uh, little tokens yet. I like to just place it correctly the first time. But if you are in the situation where you do need to swap something, you do have the option with these tokens. So now I'm gonna talk about the things I enjoy about this game. And one is the theme. Um, because I like to paint and I, and this is sort of the type of backgrounds I like to do just with colors. I find the colors very appealing. Um, it's just sort of fun that each time that you do a round, you're creating a new background painting. I like how they added in just these little details of the splashes and the little round marks too, that it's just a nice theme that I relate to. Uh, next up, I really like these cards with the bonuses. Now, when you first start playing, they recommend not using them for maybe one game, and then you can bring them in. So uh, the one we had there was the uh, edges were wild. This one is you score two extra points if you match up two twos. And what that means is um, if these say here were together, where you have a two on this tile and a two on that tile, then you would get two extra points. Um, all matched navy tile edges score double. So that's really great. So if down here, I had a two on the navy, I'd actually score four points there. So there's a whole variety of different um, bonuses. Sometimes you can take an extra turn because in rounds, Round one, you do five turns, and round two and three, you only do four turns. So if there's a card that gives you an extra turn, it gives you an extra chance to match up your tiles. So there's a bunch of different bonuses in there that's really beneficial to the game. And the other thing I like is it is a fairly quick game, and it doesn't take much to set up. So if you're just looking for a quick game to play, um, it's really easy to pull out and it's three rounds. You saw how quickly I did the round one. So sometimes I'll play two or three games in a row. 
So now a couple of things I dislike about the game. And the first is that it, it is a very simple game. It doesn't take that much brain power and it's not that huge of a challenge. You saw how quickly I was able to match almost every edge um, of my tiles. And you're just trying to match your edges and try to form a long thing. There are no extra scenarios to work through or anything. And so if you're looking for something more challenging, this might not be the game for you. You might wanna look at Cascadia or Calico because this game is uh, fairly easy to play. And the other thing is I got the Master Painters Edition and the difference is, is this tile had like some colorings on the side. Um, I'll keep it up when I'm playing, but I didn't, I just thought for filming this side was better. And then these are wooden. And again, I said, I never use these. This is the first player token, it's wooden and the cube. And, but these were just all punched out of cardboard. So I don't know if the master's edition is worth the extra money. There's a few extra uh, cards as well that you don't get in the regular edition, but I don't think it's enough to warrant the difference in the price. Because as I said, it's just a, a simple game. It's fun, but it isn't necessarily that challenging. But overall, it was still a fun game to play. And again, I, as I mentioned, I do really like the theme. So let me know if you've played Colorfield and what you think of the game.